Well, good morning, guys. It's time for your monthly check-in with your favorite brain injury survivor. I had planned to do kind of like a fun video this month where I go like on a road trip to one of my favorite places, but after talking to my doctor, he decided it'd probably be better for me to wait until after I'm fully vaccinated before I go on a road trip to this particular location because the location is kind of crowded and there's not a lot of free space for the air to move so that kind of caused me to change my plans for this month's video but this month's video kind of relates to last month's video and my brain injury awareness month video for March. This month file this video underneath a health topic video. I want to talk something about something that a lot of people get wrong and are confused about and really don't understand and that is water consumption and not just drinking water because you're thirsty but sweating and exercise I don't know about where you live but where I live there's this grand scheme that all you have to do to lose weight is sweat it off which is absurd I mean do they t still teach in school nowadays that water is essential for life. Do these kids not know that when we look for life on other planets we look for water because water is one of the indicators of life. The average human adult body is made up of 60 percent water. We need it to live. Our brains and hearts both are made up of 70 three percent water. Our lungs are kind of right around where well, our skin is actually 64 percent water. Our lungs are actually 84 percent water. I forget what our kidneys our kidneys and our muscles are right around 31 percent water. Now as that percentage of water goes down in our organs and in our brain it causes problems if you've ever heard the, heard the term heat stroke it's when our body's organs have got depleted from the water and our body's temperature starts going up too high and our basically our organs shut down so this belief that just losing water is how, is a healthy way to lose weight throw it out the door it's, it's not healthy I mean basically you're, you're, you're risking your life and you're killing yourself just to lose weight and you may lose three or four pounds of water weight but you still have all that fat so what's the point I know a lot of people think that if they dehydrate themselves they'll be more cut your body doesn't hold that much water in your skin. What gets you cut is when you burn the fat off. That's how you get, that's how you see the muscles in the veins. I don't know if you can see the veins in my arm. As your fat level goes down, not your water level goes down. When your water level goes down, you're risking your health. For myself, I've learned over the years that if I get too dehydrated, I will have a seizure. Not just little seizures, grand mal seizures where I'd be strapped down, taken to the hospital, medicated, and put on IVs to rehydrate me. Do you remember what I said at the beginning of this video about the brain being 73% water? Part of the reason why your brain needs the water is because that your brain uses water to create 
neurotransmitters and to regulate your hormones. When your brain gets dehydrated, it can't regulate your hormones in your body and it can't regulate neurotransmitters to tell your body to do things. So basically you you're shutting your heart well I don't want to say hard drive, you're shutting your brain down when you dehydrate yourself. So do not dehydrate yourself to lose water weight. That is just beyond me. For me personally, since I'm so active and because I do have the tendency to have seizures when I get dehydrated, I drink a lot of water. For me, my happy place is right around a gallon of water, depending on how active I am. The days that I bike, I might drink two gallons of water. I don't know if you can see behind me on my bike, I actually have two bottle racks. I carry two bottles of water. One's a bottle of water, the other is actually a bottle of the sports drinks that I take to help keep me hydrated. And I have lots of water bottles. Here's my favorite, my, pol my polar bottle, which helps keep my, um, my water kind of cool during these hot bike rides here in Georgia, which I've gone biking in 100 plus degree temperatures. That's my favorite. Then I have this just a standard little old cheap water bottle just to keep water. And recently, I purchased a new 24 ounce water bottle that I, I'm really excited about this one because now as it insulated, you can put hot stuff in here like coffee, which I won't ever put coffee in this one, I don't think. But this one right here, I'm planning on taking with me to a writer's conference this spring just because at the conference they're not everything's disposable and you just get these little small water cups disposable water cups and when you're eating the last thing I want I want to do is drink my water and then get up stop eating go across the dining room get more water and come back with this I can fill it up and I have enough water to get me through a meal. This is 24 ounces. Typically when I eat a meal, I drink 32 ounces. I wanted a 32 ounce version of this, but it wouldn't fit in my um, my messenger bag that I'm taking to the conference, so. I had to get a 24 ounce, that's okay. I can always take one of my other bottles. Now when I bike, now all I do I have my two water bottles on my bike, I carry a third bottle of Powerade Zero just so I can get that the electrolytes which we sweat out which we need to live so I can help replace with my Powerade Zero without getting any sugar I keep this like in a pocket on the back of my biking jersey so I actually have three bottles when I bike one's water one's a, a sport drink that contains protein I like to use. And then the third is my Powerade Zero to help with electrolytes. Now when I'm biking, if I don't drink enough water, my thighs, my calves will start cramping up. And I don't know if you've ever tried biking or doing anything walking when your muscles cramp up. It, it ain't happening. That's another sign of being dehydrated when your muscles start cramping up. Remember I said your muscles are about 30% water? When they lose that 30% water and when it gets down too low, that's when your muscles start cramping up. And when your muscles cramp up, you can't function. There are times when I'm biking my muscles cramp up because I'm not hydrated enough. I've had to stop, get off my bike, lay down on the ground, and stretch my legs out until the cramping goes away or and just drink some Powerade or some water while I'm laying there until my body starts getting it back. So I hope you understand why water is necessary. Now I'm coming to this part of the video I'm coming to some bad news. Women tend to carry 
and hold less water than men. So it's more imperative for women not to dehydrate themselves and lose weight. Because women really need all the water they can to help their bodies function and do what it needs to do. So this idea to, for women trying to dehydrate themselves or sweat off the weight is so wrong. We, you need to keep your water. The, the more active you are, the more caffeine you drink, the more water you need. For men, they, they say between three quarts to a gallon a day. Since I'm more active, I'm getting my gallon or more because I don't want to be out 20 miles on a bike ride and get dehydrated and fall out the road and somebody run me over. Fortunately, there have been times where I live where I've stopped and biking and sat on the ground to let my muscles stretch out and drink some water. There'd be passerbys, whether it's other cyclists or people just driving by, stopping and checking. And say, hey, you all right? I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm just getting some water or I'm just cooling off. Which, that, that is reassuring. So I, it, it gives me hope that by some chance, if I ever go biking and fall out, I won't just lay there until some vultures come and pick away at my body. Somebody's going to hopefully check on me, but the way this world's going, that may be changing soon. But I hope you understand the need now to not lose weight by dehydrating your body. Another one of the reasons why water is key for us. It's not just for sweat. Water is the body's tra primary transport of oxygen throughout your body. If you know any, if you took chemistry, biology in, in high school, you should know part of water is oxygen, H2O. So when you're drinking water, you're not just hydrating your body, you're getting oxygen to your body. And if you've ever had the point where you're not, your body, your stomach uses water to help digest food. So if you ever feel like you're, you're kind of sluggish, like you're not really digesting the food, drink more water. Water helps your body digest the food you eat. And if you're like me, and you like to eat as much as I do, you're going to need more water. Because I eat six to eight times a day. As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to go eat again and drink another quart of water, which at this point in time, it is just after nine in the morning. Usually by the time I go to the gym in the afternoon, I've got a gallon of water down. And this is something that I see a lot of guys at the gym getting wrong. They'll go to the gym and they'll take a an empty milk jug full of water and drink water while you work. I'm like, what's the point? Your body needs the water before you work out. It works kind of like the radiator in your car. You don't wait till your car overheats to pour cool it into the radiator. By that time, you've already done damage to your car, and your your car is not going to take the coolant. If you've I don't know if you've ever done it before, but if your car if you've ever seen a car overheat and you open up your radiator and you try to pour coolant in, the radiator is so hot hot it literally spews that coolant back out on you it's the same thing that happens when 
we have heat strokes. Our body is just too hot, and if you're trying to drink the water in, your body's not going to take it. You, you, you're going you're gonna to puke it right back out. The goal is to get the water in before you exercise. Just like when you drive. The goal is, I'm going on a road trip next weekend. So before I go, I'm going to make sure all my fluids are topped off. Especially my, my coolant. Because I live in the south, and in the south, it gets pretty hot. Here in Georgia, it is actually a subtropical climate, which means it's basically it's saying we're on an island without all the water, without all the pretty palm trees. So that's why anytime I'm 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 going for a drive, even if it's across town, I make sure all my fluids are topped off because it it doesn't take long for this humidity in the south to make it feel like it's 110 degrees. So please, 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 I know everybody's trying to get beach ready for the summer. Do it the right way. Do not try to lose weight by sweating it out. Because you're not going to lose any water under your skin and get cut. What you're going to do is you're going to end up dehydrating your organs, your kidneys, your liver, your spleen, your heart, your brain, and you're going to do more harm than good and you're still going to have all that fat. So the goal is to get your heart rate up. Make your heart stronger. Your heart gets weaker the more dehydrated you get. Please, please, please load up on the water. Before you exercise, before you do anything outside, especially if you live in the south like I live, stay hydrated. So this that's really all I wanted to share with you this month but hopefully next month I will have a special video you might even see this little baby pop up in the next video again so until then drink your water stay hydrated and I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks to a month. Bye-bye.